full-on sprint in six inch stilettos i have no problem with that and i think that it's my body's way of making up for the fact that i'm on the shorter side you know like my feet were like hey we understand we got you hi i'm jenna ortega and this is my woman's health body scan something that i used to get hung up on a lot when i was younger was my freckles when I first started working in the industry, when I was working with makeup artists, they would either cover my freckles completely, which made me feel like they weren't something worth showing or worth appreciating, but also I would get comments like, oh, you have a dirty face, or like, your face looks dirty, or like, things like that that were kind of weird side digs, which I don't think was professional in any way, shape, or form, but also me being a people pleaser new in the industry. I just kind of went along with what people would say. Here's the thing about the Hispanic community or Latinx community is it's very, very diverse. So it's, you know, we all look completely different. But I think with my background, because I'm Mexican and Puerto Rican, I don't know how common freckles are in that region. I just know my dad is covered head to toe everywhere and he's 100% Mexican. I don't think it's very common, I guess, or maybe it wasn't seen as much in the industry given like how little the latin community is represented i do think that a racial component slightly had a part to play because that's also something that people would tell me growing up regardless in terms of racial slurs in terms of being dirty and other slurs that i guess i won't really say on camera but things like that yeah i think that they probably weren't used to working with somebody um, and that was another thing too, being on set, like nobody ever knew how to do my makeup. And I didn't think it was that hard, but I guess just because my skin has a lot of different undertones, I was never happy with the way I looked on camera growing up because it was like way too dark or way too light or, you know, nothing ever really matched my, it was really, really strange time. It's funny because now we're in a time where people are drawing on their freckles and, oh, freckles are so cute and freckles are so this, but it took me a really long time to kind of I don't know, come to terms with the fact that they're on my face for good, and that's it. I think anybody who has darker hair uh, knows that mustache hairs, they'll, they'll pop up. So I don't wax, I use like a cream bleach. When I first started, I didn't have to do it that often. Like I'll do it once every few months, but now it's become a thing where it's like once every two to three weeks, maybe once every month, I guess. But because I'm being, constantly filmed and on camera and things like that i think sometimes i get <laughs> self-conscious about that so it's like as much as i could stay on top of it i will so i did get my wisdom teeth taken out mm, when i was 17 and i didn't want to go under i stayed awake um, they just numb my mouth pretty much and it was crazy because where I was laying there was like a mirror right above me So I could see what was happening in my mouth. So I just put my headphones on I watched it because I'm weird and then um, I remember there's one part too when he was the, the Orthodontist was on my last tooth and he was like, do you think you need more numbing? You know medicine. I was like, no, I'm I, I'm good He's like, all right, and he cracked the tooth and I looked at him and he looked at me and we were like yeah, maybe we'll put some more of that numbing stuff. But after that, it was fine. As somebody who struggles with anxiety and depression and spends a lot of time alone, lives in a lonely city, I do work pretty hard. And it's weird to like give myself that or admit that because I don't know, I think I perceive myself very differently than family and friends may perceive myself. But when it comes to taking care of myself mentally. I think that that's something I still struggle with to this day because I find myself being one of those people who's never truly satisfied where it's like, you know, I'm working a ton and I'm telling myself, I just need a break, I need time to myself, I need to see my family and friends. But then when I spend time with my family and friends and I'm not working, then I'm freaking out because man, when am I gonna work again? And when am I gonna be creative again and make a piece of art? I think that even if I may not feel I need a break and I want to keep going and I want to keep pushing myself, I think it is really important that when you're struggling like that or are having trouble expressing yourself or finding yourself or, you know, just feeling very lost, even though it's kind of scary to confront yourself during these breaks and um, get to know yourself better, even if you don't want to, I think it's essential and necessary. And while it may be a scary thing, 
I think in the end it will be very beneficial. So I personally am still working through that phase where it's like, what do I like? What do I not like? How can I feel more fulfilled in this sense? Is there another way I could express myself creatively that I would enjoy and would give me just as much um, happiness? I don't know, you kind of got to find what works for you and I think I'm still discovering that. My favorite body part to exercise, I don't think it's very common, but I'm gonna say my legs. I just feel like they've always been the strongest part of my body. I love to run, I love to play soccer growing up. I love doing squats and weights. I don't know, I just feel so secure in what I'm doing and I just know that my form like if I'm lifting weights or something, I just know that my form is 100% correct because I know exactly what I'm doing. So I guess just that being one of the first things I really did, uh, it's kind of become my favorite thing to train. I've been doing a lot of horror recently. So I've gotten a plaster of my face or random body parts for, I mean, maybe three, four times now. It only takes like 30 to 40 minutes. It's not that long. They have you sit there, they put your ponytail back if you have longer hair and they wrap it up. You kind of look like an alien because you just have like this long tinfoil braid situation happening in the back of your head. And then they put a bald cap on you and then they pour one layer of silicone, let that get hard, pour the second layer and then they start to put the plaster and after the plaster is on, they'll put like a clear seal on everything. And then they go from the top and they crack it. And then from there, they'll just kind of, um pry it open and pop it off. But I know a lot of people get claustrophobic. They, get, they give you the little nose holes and that's it. You can't breathe through your mouth and you kind of start to feel the silicone go in between your lips. I personally don't get claustrophobic and I took a nap every single time. So to me, 10 out of 10 experience, would do it again. Um, only time I've really enjoyed a nap. I really should do more for my voice, I think. Especially like, I have so much respect for voice actors or singers or any type of vocal performer um, that puts so much effort in keeping their voice. All right, especially not only is it, because I do do a lot of animated projects, but then also um, because of the projects I've been doing recently, it's a lot of screaming and yelling and crying and it's a lot of wear and tear. I have this film coming out, The Fallout. There's a lot of crying and panic attacks or anxiety attacks or things like that, that, you know, where you tend to be sobbing. And I remember that, like, trying to talk to people or film scenes after that. It's, your voice sounds different. It sounds like you're losing it a little bit. I'm currently working on an A24 production in New Zealand um, with director and writer Ty West. And it's a horror film. I've been doing a ton of screaming. I lost my voice last week. But sometimes with things like that, sometimes I push myself, even if I know I'm gonna lose my voice because sometimes I'm not working the next day or don't have dialogue. So I just kind of fully commit in that sense. But yeah, any horror project that I've done, there's been a lot of screaming involved for me. Thank you so much for watching Body Scan and do not forget to subscribe to Women's Health.